Hey, hey, God bless everyone on this beautiful, gorgeous, marvelous, super duper day that the Lord has made for you and I to rejoice in it. Beloved, I pray you're doing good today. I just pray that God blesses you in a mighty way. And of course, I'm sitting in my Sam Mobile, comfortable here with a cup of Café Bustelo. Watch this. Woo! Hey! And of course, I'm doing my devotion that I do in the mornings. First thing I like to do is just get with God. And I continually study this book, 199 Treasures of Wisdom. On talking with God. Now, I'm glad it says with God, not just to God, but with God. When you talk to someone, it's just you talking. When you talk with someone, it's a two-way conversation. And God talks to us through the word, through circumstances, through a prophet, prophetess, someone in the body of Christ, or directly to you, sometimes dreams. But God talks to us. And there's 199 treasures of wisdom on talking with God. Let me just read you one of them, if you don't mind. Is it all right, if I may? Oh, thank you for your permission. I really do appreciate that. Watch this now. I will take time. I will take time each day. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Does it say each day? Or does it say just on Sunday? Or maybe just on a holiday like Christmas or Thanksgiving. Well, it says each day. Are you doing that? Are you willing to do that? I will take time each day <laughs> to love God mm -mm -mm. and believe in Him with a firm faith, not a shaky faith. No, depending on the circumstance, I believe God. Well, if my check comes through or I get that promotion or the Lord heals me, whatever it is you anticipating from the Lord. The children of Israel in the Old Testament, if God blessed them and fulfilled their petition or their heart's desire, they serve the Lord. We be do. If God did or took time or was teaching them a lesson, they turned their backs on God. Sometimes we Christians are like that. We negotiate with God. We want to bargain with Him. We have certain petition and certain perhaps uh, time limit. If you do this by this time, Lord. No, listen. When we serve God, listen to me. I'm talking to you about you and God. You and your God. When you serve God, you serve Him in spite of circumstances. The greatest commandment. The Lord Jesus quoted it from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. He said, hear, O Israel. Hear, listen. The Lord God is one. You shall have no other God. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Just fall in love with Jesus. I'm not talking about the church. Church is good. Go to church. I'm not talking about one of the five-fold ministry, the pastor, the preacher, the teacher, the evangelist, or the prophet. I'm talking about you falling in love with God himself, not a religion, not a movement, not a philosophy, but with the Lord Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, the light of the world, the bread of life, the door to the sheepfold, the lover of your soul, the keeper of the lost and found, your Lord, the resurrected Christ, when you fall in love with him, then you will Seek him each day to love him. I read something the other day and I saw something on, on social media. Listen to this. You tell me how you feel about this. And you got to be careful about what you hear, what you read. Not everything is true. You got to check it out through the word of God. Listen, I read something that says, stop suffering. It was in the church. Go on, name the church or denomination. Stop suffering. Okay. All right. I, everybody likes that. Woo, stop suffering. And then today, some person, it's supposed to be a, a wise person from India and all that, a Buddhist or something. He said that you need to learn how to 
not suffer anymore. And I said to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation. You will have suffering, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's found in the gospel of St. John, chapter 15 and 16. He said, I've come overcome the world. And in first John, he said, this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now listen, for you to stop suffering, listen to me, watch my lips. For you and I to stop suffering, that we all would love that, you would have to be dead. Dead. No lo entendiste. Muerto. Para tú y yo dejar de sufrir. Porque hay una religión que dice, cesa de sufrir. Deja de sufrir. Para tú cesarlo, dejar de sufrir, tiene que estar muerto. Y después de eso no se sabe lo que viene. Si no estás con Cristo, prepárate. You have to be dead, and after death, if you're not with Jesus, you better prepare yourself, boy or girl. But you cannot stop suffering here on earth. We will suffer. The, the, the amazing thing is that God gives you the strength, the power, the energy to endure your suffering, to go through your suffering. He gives you the grace to get through it. As if it wasn't existing. You go through it with joy and with peace. But people that are going around saying, stop suffering. Everybody flops to them. When Jesus was teaching, he says, listen, you got to drink my blood and eat my flesh. I'm talking gospel. If you don't know the word, you're going to say, Sammy, de que tu habla? If you don't know the word, you're going to say, what are you talking about? Jesus said, you have to drink my blood and eat my flesh. Now that was symbolic. Not literally like you're a vampire, I'm going to eat the, drink the blood. In other words, you have to be willing to die for him. You have to leave everything. And the disciples walked away. The people were walking away because they couldn't take that teaching. They said, wow, this is too strong. But today, if you say stop suffering, everybody flops to you. They're not going to walk away. They're going to run to you. What? Well, stop suffering? Hey, put me down for that. That's a false teaching. And many people run after that. Stop suffering. Deja de sufrir. Es una mentira. ¿Quién va a dejar de sufrir? Lo que está muerto. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Jesús dijo, toma la cruz y sígueme a mí. In other words, you're going to have to bite the bullet. Tiene que amarrarte el cinturón porque la cosa se va a poner dura y vamos a sufrir. Pero Dios te da la gracia para que tú puedas perseverar en medio del sufrimiento. ¿Cuánto dicen amén? Mm. So, I take each day to seek the Lord, to love God. Mira, te voy a hacer una pregunta. Ven acá, Pancho Villa. Acércate a mí un poco. Este, María, María Elena, mira. ¿Usted es casado? No, no, no dije cansado. Dije casado. Una persona me dijo, sí, estoy casado y cansado. Eh, mire, si usted es casado, casada, ¿cuándo fue la última vez que tú le dijiste a tu pareja, yo te amo? Fácil palabra. Yo te, listen, come over here, Roy Rogers and uh, Dale Eleven. Listen, come over here. I used to, it's Dale Evans, but I used to say Dale Eleven all my life. Listen, come over here. If you don't know who that is, find out. Are you married? Are you married? Told him to marry. When was the last time you told your spouse, wife, your husband, honey, I love you? Oh, Sammy, that's during the honeymoon. It was 40 years ago. When was the last time you really told someone, I love your kids? You have children? Usted tiene hijo. Cuando fue la última vez que tú le dijiste a tu hijo, yo te amo, niña o niño, o niños. Cuando fue la última vez que tus hijos te dijeron, Papi o mami, yo te amo. Estoy hablando serio. Esto está tocando fua, fua, el corazón. Tú dices, Sammy, ¿cuál es el punto? You say, Sammy, what's your point? I don't understand. Well, God wants to hear that from you. That's my point. Dios quiere oír eso que salga de ti. Ese es el punto mío. Que tú le digas a Dios, yo te amo. ¿Cuándo fue la última vez? Yo le pregunté a la hermana ayer, ¿cuándo fue la última vez que usted leyó la Biblia? Que leíste un texto, un capítulo, un libro. Me dijo, ¿ah? Ese tiempo, cristiana, ministra del evangelio. Listen, God loves you and he wants you to love him. 
So when was the last time you told God, I love you? You haven't? Do it now. Take a minute. Take a second. I'm going to drink my coffee while you tell me, Father, I love you. I will take time. Hay personas que dicen, yo no tengo tiempo. Tú tienes 24 horas al día como yo no. Tiene más ni menos. No tiene tiempo. Hale el tiempo. You don't have the time. Some people say, I don't have the time. You got to make the time because you have 24 hours just like you, just like me, just like you. You have 24 hours. Make the time. Make the time for some important things in life. To tell your friends, your family, your loved ones, I love you. Take time to exercise, to eat better, to sleep right. Listen, these things are essential. When I was young, when you're young, you don't care about these things. You don't even think of it. You're indestructible. But when you get older, you got to think about those things, man. There's an investment there. I take time to tell God I love you. Tell him I love you and mean it. I will take the time each day to love God. Just love the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I go get my coffee at this uh, restaurant in the corner about two days ago, the waitress and even the cook, because it's a fast food joint, the cook is right out there, they gave me compliments the way I was dressed, and I said, you know why I'm dressed like, do you know why I got, do you see this piece in me, because I have Jesus in my heart, <laughs> oh, you, I said, yeah, I'm an evangelical Christian, born again, fui a tomar un café hace dos días, y me dieron un cumplido, la, la mesera y el cocinero, oye, tú, tú viste bien, tú siempre estás alegre, yo estoy alegre, y así porque Cristo está en mi corazón, oh, tú eres cristiano, sí, yo soy evangélico cristiano, now every day, every morning I go there, Dios te bendiga, cuando voy por la mañana, Dios te bendiga, every morning I go there, oh, God bless you, I said, praise the Lord, God bless you, they, they, they acknowledging that I'm a Christian, and they all the sort of sort have to change their mask, and put on a God bless you, philosophy. Do they know the Lord? I don't think so. I don't see no fruit. Jesus shall know by the fruit, but I'll leave that between God and them. But and my point is that when you are walking with the Lord, people will know it and people will address you as such. I always say dress the way you want to be addressed. Okay, let me go ahead with this. I will take time to love God and believe in him with a firm faith. Creen él con una fe firme. Hay personas que le creen hoy y mañana no. There's people that believe him today and not tomorrow. Believe in him with a firm faith. Boom, solid as a rock. Not going anywhere. Stand firm in the Lord. Let me give you three words quickly. Number one, life's purpose is to love God. The purpose of life is not for you to make a lot of money. That's good. Go ahead. It's not for you to have a lot of things. Get that jet. Buy that private plane. Get those seven Royce Royce if you can. But that's not the purpose of life. Not even to have a family. The purpose of life that God created us is to love him. To love him is to obey him. To obey him is to have fellowship with him. Socialize with him. To love God. That's the purpose of life. That's why man's heart today is empty. Because they don't take time out to love God. They don't seek the Lord. They don't talk to God. They don't tell God to love him. And their heart is going after other things. And there will always be a void in your heart until you settle it with God. Saying, I love you and I'm going to follow you. Love God. Fall in love with Jesus. That will be your purpose in life. That's my purpose. That's my destiny in life. To love other things will pursue. Other things will come. Whatever it is that's positive and that's good and that's healthy and that's praiseworthy. But the first one is I want to love God. Second thing is you love God, you're gonna love others, and you'll love yourself. Woo! Hey, Sammy, break that down. I'm not saying you gotta. Love people's behavior. You love them. You don't have to like their behavior. There are people that act like the devil. You don't have to accept and tolerate people's behavior. Listen to me. Listen to me. I've been around the corner more times than the ice cream man. I know a thing or two. You can love a person but not their behavior. And if you can 
encourage them and help them change, that's good. They don't want to change, you may have to love them from a distance. Mira, quédate por allá. Yo te amo, pero quédate por allá. Porque a veces uno ama a la persona, uno tiene que amar su conducta, sus actos. Vamos a dejar eso para otro video. Love God, you love others as yourself. And you love yourself. You love yourself, you don't do things that are bad to yourself. Guys going around shooting drugs and using drugs, you're not loving yourself. I used to see these guys come to the detail. They're shooting drugs 24-7 there. I love my son. You don't love your son or your daughter. You love yourself. You don't love your wife or your parents. You are selfish. You love yourself. You love the drugs more than you do anybody else. I'll leave that for another video. Listen to me. Love God. You love others. You love yourself. And then if you love God, watch this now. If you love God, you leave, you're willing, willing to leave everything for God. If you have the attitude that I'm hanging on to these things that I obtain, you came, you and I came into this world with nothing. We're going to leave with nothing, without anything, should you say. But if you love God, you're willing. The word is willing to leave. You got the attitude that you're willing to leave everything for God. Isn't that what Jesus said? He said, you're willing to leave your mother, your father, and anything else to follow me. You're willing. Doesn't mean I'm going to sell my house or give it away or my car. Here's all my clothes. I'm leaving everything for the Lord. That's insanity. You, There's a place for you. It's called the G Building in Brooklyn, Kings County. Two men, six feet four, black suits, white vests like this one here. White vests. They call it a straight jacket. They have that for you with your size. Not saying you leave everything. And we're saying that you're willing. If God calls you and God wants you to give things away or give money away, whatever it is, you're willing to do it. You're not holding on to it. When you hold on to it, you lose it. It rots. That becomes your downfall. You're willing to let it go. You're willing to give it up for Jesus. You're willing to put it in God's hands. It's a ministry, a job, a family. You're willing for the Lord's sake. Check yourself. Are you willing? You have that house. You love that house. Are you willing? If God calls you to leave it, are you willing? I'm not saying he called you. Oh, I got to go. Are you willing? That's the key. If you say, no, I'm not willing, man. I ain't like giving all my house. Check yourself, man. Talk to God about that. Number one is love God. Number two is willing to leave Everything for God. And number three, lay things down on Jesus' feet. Bing! Stop suffering. <laughs> when I come to the Lord, it starts suffering. When you come to Jesus, it starts suffering for the Lord's sake. Lay everything at Jesus' feet. Lord, here's my talent. Lord, here's my belongings. Here's my material things. Here's my riches. Here's my family. Everything I own, I lay it down on your feet. Number two was be willing. Number three, by faith, put it in God's hands. Just put it in God's hands. This is not mine. This is the Lord. I, he, I borrowed it. He lent it to me. Love the Lord every day, but live free from all those things, possessions and everything. Don't let them control you. You control them. Don't let them have power over you. You have power over them. Father Jesus, I pray for everybody. Listen to me right now. The power of the Holy Spirit will touch, heal, and deliver by the power of Jesus' name. En el nombre de Jesús, yo te pido que tú toques, Señor. Las, los que están oyendo este video, que tú los toques, los salve, los transforme. En el nombre de Jesús. Ping, bang, boom. God bless you. Amen. I pray this video has helped you somehow. Listen, to know God is to love God.